a in-season, right-now word. Amen? Hallelujah. You know, only the Lord can do that. Amen? Right. It's not Pastor Michael. It's the Holy Spirit. And how many are glad the Holy Spirit's in this room today? Amen. And how many are glad if you're a believer, the Holy Spirit's inside of you? Yes. Isn't that awesome? Yes. And I believe that God directs His Word. The Bible says you'll know truth, and the truth will set you free today. Amen. How many believe we can get freer today? Amen. Amen. The word sets us free. Amen. So let's just activate our faith this morning. We're not looking to Pastor Michael. We're just looking to the word. Amen. Right. We're looking to the Holy Spirit. And this is going to be our day. Amen. Amen. All right. Father, we just thank you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you for the word. We thank you for the power of the word. We thank you for these precious people that are here and for those that are watching and for those that are going to watch this, Lord. And we just thank you, Father God, for transformational effect this morning, that our mind's going to be renewed, our life's going to be transformed, and Lord, we're not going to be the same when we leave this place. And we just thank you for the spirit of grace and the spirit of wisdom. And we just thank you for what you'll do today. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Everybody say rejoice. rejoice. Everybody say rejoice. rejoice. Now, this is probably one of my funner ones that I did. I took a lot of time to do this now. <laughs> now, this is just all clip art. You can find it online. And I just kind of, I take from Peter and take, I give it to Paul. But, but notice the word rejoice. Everybody say rejoice. rejoice. And we see some happy people that are praising the Lord. This guy's actually doing the happy dance, right? <laughs> How many old Christians should know the happy That's dance, right. Yeah. right? And this guy's just spontaneous praise. You see smiles on their face, right? But above or around them or in the midst of, there's a storm. There's a, there's a tornado there. And a lot of times when we think about worshiping and praising God, we think, well, we're only going to do it when things are good. When things are just, we got a new car, we got a job, something exciting happens, then we're going to praise the Lord. But we're going to see from the scriptures that praising the Lord is not something we do just in the sunny times, but it's in the hard times. Oh, yeah. And there's a spiritual principle that's involved when we praise God. When we worship God and we're joyful, there's things that are happening in the spirit. And when you're sad and you're depressed, there's negative things happening in the spirit. So we're going to see from the scriptures today, we are going to rejoice in the Lord, not just when things are good, but when things are bad. And if you'll do it in the midst of your storm, you'll start to see as we'll see some scriptures. I got a lot of scripture, but we won't get to it all today. But uh, we'll silence the enemy. Amen. When you worship God, you literally silence the enemy. Amen. Amen. You stop his for There's something powerful that takes place. Amen. I want you to see with me. Let's go to the book of uh, Philippians, the first chapter in verse number 12. And in this book of Philippians, the word rejoice or uh, the Greek word for rejoice is used eight times in this book of Philippians. And Paul, when he was writing this book, he literally, as we're going to see, he was in prison. Cassie, if you could just put, okay, verse 12. And, he, and he, he's, he's in prison writing this letter to fellow believers. In other words, naturally, he's in a hard spot. He's confined. It's challenging. And, he's, and, and in this book, we'll notice, this is one of his most happy books that he ever wrote. And notice what he says here. He says, I would you should understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel. Look at verse number 13. He says, he goes, so that my bonds in Christ are manifested in the palace in all other places. Verse number 14. He says, and many of the brethren in the Lord waxing confident by my bonds, they're, they're speaking out the word with fear. Look at verse number 15. He says, some, and he, he noticed this now. He says, some indeed preach Christ even of envy and strife, but he says, but some are preaching it of goodwill. So he's, he's in the prison, he's, in, he's there, and he could have looked at it and said, oh, woe is me. But in the midst of this thing, he, he starts to go, listen, I want you guys to understand that what's happened to me, the gospel is being further preached. And he says, some people are preaching the gospel for the right reason. He goes, but there's some people that are doing it for the wrong reason as well. But look at verse number 16. I want you to see it. He goes, he goes one creature's Christ of contention, not of sincerity, supposing to add affliction to my bonds. So some people are doing it just to get Paul upset, get him mad. Look at verse number 17. He says, but the other of, of love, knowing that I'm at, set for the defense of the gospel. Look at verse 18. And you love the word? He says, what then, notwithstanding every way, whether in pretense or whether in truth, Christ is preached, and therein do I rejoice, yea, and I will rejoice. Everybody say, I will rejoice. 
Go with me over to the fourth chapter, verse number four. How many love the word? He's in a bad situation. He could have just said, oh, woe is me. I'm in prison. I'm not out there. My ministry can't have full effect. But he didn't look at it like that. He said, I don't care what's going on. He looked at the positive and he said, in the midst of my storm, while the rain's coming down, while there's a tornado behind me, I will rejoice. Amen. Notice he didn't say, I will feel like rejoicing. He said, I will rejoice. Yeah. This is where a lot of people miss it. They go, whoa, I just got the happy gene. I'm going to be happy today. Something good happened. Ooh, I had some good food. Listen, you and I, we're going to see from the scriptures, if we're going to be people that are going to rejoice, you're going to have to rejoice as an act of your will. Hallelujah. Notice what it says here in Philippians, the fourth chapter. He says this to these precious people. He says, rejoice in the Lord. Always. <laughs> Everybody say Always. always. Well, Pastor Michael, nobody knows. No, no. Even if you got a bad situation, even though you feel like you got run over by the uh, truck and the tire tracks are still in your face, what are you supposed to do? Rejoice. He said, rejoice in the Lord always. And guess what else he says? And again, I say rejoice. Well, Pastor Michael, you don't understand. It's really bad. People are attacking me. My body's in pain. No, there's no exemptions here. Notice what that word rejoice is. I want you to see it. Slide number 12. How many love the word this morning? Because there's a force. There's something powerful that happens in you and me when we choose as an act of our will to put a smile on our face, face and rejoice in the Lord. This is the Greek word for rejoice. I want you to see it. It means to be glad. He said, be glad in the Lord. How often? Always. Be glad when you got a raise, no. new car, new suit. Amen. Your teeth are as awesome as mine. No. <laughs> Amen. He said, be glad. Be glad. Be glad. How many know there's power in that word rejoice? Just like God said, let there be light and light became. How many know when you receive this word, you can start being glad and the gladness of God will manifest in your life. He said, be glad. It means to rejoice exceedingly, to be cheerful. How many cheerful people in the house? Amen. Notice he didn't, he didn't say just have chair. He said to be cheerful. Full. Can people tell if you're happy? Yes. All right. It means calmly, happy, well off. But notice this one word here. I love this word thrive. When you and I are rejoicing, it causes us to thrive. It means to prosper, be fortunate, successful, to grow or develop vigorously, to flourish. When you and I are praising God, there is a spiritual force that is at work. And it's causing us to, to be blessed in a greater dimension. It's causing us to be successful. It's causing us to develop. It's causing us to flourish. How many want to flourish in some areas of your life? Instead of moaning and groaning about your situation, you and I have to rejoice. Everybody say rejoice. rejoice. Notice what it says in Proverbs, the 17th chapter, verse 22. You already are happy this morning. I can see it already. All right. Amen. You show your pearly, pearly whites, your coffee stained yellows are happy. Hallelujah. How many excited this morning? Amen. Notice what the word says. It says a merry heart. What does it do? It, it, what does it do? Does good. But notice what he goes on to say. But a broken spirit, what does it do? Is it possible depression and sadness and gloom can affect you physically? Absolutely. He said, a merry heart, a merry heart doeth good. Well, we got to look at these words. Look at the word for merry, slide number 13. How many are glad we got some joy in us this morning? The word merry, this is the Hebrew word. It means spontaneous expression of excitement. And cheer, showing, showing joy and rejoicing. Amen. I'll get people and go, oh, Pastor Michael, you're just too excited. Pastor Michael, you just are too spontaneous. You know, joyful people should be spontaneous. Yeah, right. Some of you got to shake it off. Some of you have been sitting out in the rain like the tin man, and you need the oil of gladness to fall on you, and you need to stir up that joy. Because he said, a merry heart. When you and I yield to spontaneous expressions of excitement and joy, it, do, it doeth good. Yes. Go back to the scripture. I want you to see it. How many love the word this morning? Yes. 
I'm seeing a lot more smiles this morning. Amen. He said, a merry heart doeth good. Notice the word for good. Look at the word. Slide 14. We love the word. Amen. Notice the word good. He said, the merry heart, when you are given expression and joyful, it, it means it does good. It means to deal well with, to make, to make a thing good or right. How many want some things to be made good? How many want some things to be made right? How many want some things to be made beautiful? It starts with... Nobody knows. <laughs> Isn't that what most people do? Yes. If we went around the room today and I could just check your spiritual, you ever see those things like cartoons where they have like the bubble over the person's head and it's there? And if we could just look at people's head there, some of you are like, oh, Pastor Michael, you don't know the problems I have. No, the problem is, I'm not saying you don't got a problem. I'm not saying the problem's not real. But you don't realize how big and how awesome and how great and how good our God is. Yeah. And when we become like little children and we start to give spontaneous expressions of joy and cheerfulness, excitement, what does it do? It deals well with the problem. It deals, it makes the problem good. It makes the problem right. And it makes it beautiful. Yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Some of you woke up this morning, you know, and you go, I don't look as good as I should. Well, stop moaning and groaning about that. Start putting a happy smile on your face because the, the merry heart will make you look good. I tell my kids, I tell my wife, the only reason I'm so good looking is because Jesus is inside my heart. Right, Pastor? <laughs> you too, Pastor. I give it all to the Lord. If I didn't have the, I didn't have the greater one inside of me, I'd be ornery, miserable, depressed, gloomy. But when you got Jesus inside you, it's better than Mary Kay. Glory to God. It's better than Botox. <laughs> Go back to the scripture. You guys are, you guys are, oh, happiness is in the room. Now, this is what I want you to do. When joy starts to come, we had our dear sister Desiree after church Sunday last week, and I'm going to tell you. She said, Pastor, you're up there praying for people, and I just started laughing. I don't understand. You know what? I want you to laugh. This morning, I want you to be happy. I want you to stir it up. Go like this. He said, a merry heart doeth what? Good. Doeth good like what? Medicine. Ooh, like a medicine. Notice what the word medicine here is. I want you to see it's life 15. How many love the word? Yeah. It says, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. It's a cure. It's a healing. I like this last part. A lifting high of something. The lifting of an illness. When you, it's not, you know, medicine only is good if you take it. And it's prescribed dosage. The prescribed dosage for rejoicing and being merry is all the time. And if you keep taking the merry medicine of God's word, it's going to do good. What's it going to do? It's going to cause healing to come. It's going to lift something off you. It's going to lift that sickness off you. Amen. Some people say, well, Pastor Mike, I put a smile on my face this morning. How come I'm not? It's not working. Keep taking the medicine. If you go to the doctor, you give the doctor the same courtesy. If the doctor says, okay, here's the prescription. Take 15 of these a day. <laughs> that, that's just the white pill and then take 14 of the blue pill <laughs> throw in a, and you, you would be religious about it but you wouldn't call the doctor the first day and go man I took that pill nothing happened the doctor would say keep taking the medicine right. listen everybody say I'm going to keep taking the merry medicine the so I'm going to keep taking the merry medicine the go with me go, uh, Cassie go back to the scripture Cassie's doing a great job because a merry heart what does it do does good. Amen. Like, like what? Medicine. What does the medicine do? You got to keep taking it, right? He says, but he goes on to say, but a broken heart, a broken spirit, your heart, what does it do? Dries up. Look at the word for broken. I want you to see it. How many are excited today? He said, a broken heart. Now listen, we, some people say, well, Pastor Michael, you don't understand what I've been going through. I have a right to be crushed. I have a right to be broken down. Wounded, uh, deeply affected, as with grief and fear. People say, well, Pastor Michael, you just don't understand. I'm just trying to help you. Uh, if you look at me as a fanatic this morning, it's okay. I am a fanatic, <laughs> right? And, and the thing that's going to help you is not me sitting here pontificating and going, well, what do you think? I don't care what I think or you think. I'm just going to give you the word. You check it out for yourself. Make sure that I'm teaching you the word. 
right? Because I don't know about you, I'm ready to walk on water. I'm ready to cast out some devils. I'm ready to go higher and further than ever before in Jesus' name. He says a broken spirit, a crushed spirit, filled with grief, filled with fear, stricken. Go back to the scripture, my dear sister. Oh, we are so good. We are so blessed. He says, that, but a broken spirit, what does it do? Dries up. Look at the word for dryeth up. I want you to see it. Slide 17. How many are excited for the word this morning? The word dryeth, slide 17, means to make dry. Again, it's like medicine. It works. Medicine works over a period of time, right? Mary heart doth good like medicine. But when your spirit is broken, it dries. If you stay in that state, if you stay in that state, of depression. If you stay in that state, what does it do? It causes you and I to, to, to dry up, to wither, to be ashamed, confused, disappointed. See, when you open that door and you just allow that grief, allow that uh, sadness to just stay in you, this is what it'll start doing in your life. Are you hearing me, church family? So you can see the powerfulness of rejoicing, but also there's a negative thing that can happen when you and I are just not doing it. Are you hearing me, church family? And I don't stand before you as the grand poobah of joyfulness this morning. <laughs> Are you hearing me? You know, I have to stir it up just like you. You go, oh, Pastor, but you got a beautiful wife. you got great kids. You're, uh, hey, there's still things that the devil will try to get on me. Because yep. he, he knows why. He wants to start working sadness in me, right. grief in me. Yep. Cassie, put that scripture up in the Amplified Bible. We're so blessed. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. How many love it? Amen. Look at it says there, a happy heart is good medicine and a cheerful mind, what does it do? Works healing. But a broken spirit, what does it do? It dries up the bones. Let's look at that in a couple other translations. Slide number 18. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many joyful people in the house? Yeah. Hallelujah. Bible in basic English says a glad heart, I didn't say this, makes a healthy body, but a crushed spirit makes the bones dry. Yeah. Common English Bible says this, a joyful heart helps healing. But a broken spirit, what does it do? Dries up, the Dries up the bones. The complete Jewish Bible says this, a happy heart is good medicine, but low spirits yeah. <laughs> Are you with me this morning? Yeah. I didn't lose you, right? <laughs> Cassie, put that up in the Message Bible. How many love the Word? Amen. This is what happens. Notice what it goes on to say. It said, a cheerful disposition is good. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. For who? For your health. Yeah. Gloom and doom. <laughs> <laughs> what does it do? <laughs> leave you bone tired. <laughs> Are you guys hearing this this morning? That's, some of you guys just shake it off. Are you guys hearing me this morning? Cassie, put up uh, slide number, uh, no, excuse me, put up uh, Proverbs 17, 22. Ooh, we get in it today. How many are glad we're getting it today? Notice what it says in Proverbs 17, 22. A merry heart... Am I? That's the same one. I'm sorry, Cassie. We'll, we'll just, that's good. We'll just, we'll read. okay. What am I doing here? Okay. I'm sorry, Cassie. Um, all right. Let's go to Proverbs 15, 15, 13. There we go. How many love the word? Amen. See, we're going to see it through the scriptures. It's not just like one scripture. We're going to see it. Proverbs 15, 13. It says, a merry heart. What does it do? But, but by sorrow of the heart, the spirit is what? Broken. Right. Now look at that scripture. Uh, Cassie, put up uh, slide number 20. It's a merry heart. What is, if you, some of you say, well, I'm merry for crying out loud. <laughs> no. Look at Good News Translate. says, when people are happy, so you can't fool anybody. <laughs> but when they're sad, can you just check yourself out in the mirror and go, no, nah, you're not happy. And you want to change it. Are you guys hearing me? Look at the, the 15th verse of that chapter, Cassie. In the King James. Notice what it says. It says, all the days of the afflicted are what? 
But he that has a merry heart, what is it? <laughs> he said, all the days of the afflicted. Look at the word for afflicted and evil. Uh, I want you to see it. How many love the word? Slide number 21. He said, all the days of the afflicted. What's the word for afflicted? Depressed in mind or circumstances. All the days of the afflicted. All the days when you're just yielding to that depression and sadness. The Bible says they're evil. The word evil, there's the Hebrew word. It means something dysfunctional, wrong, disagreeable, malignant. It's like a cancer. Right. Bad, unpleasant. What does cancer do? It doesn't want to stop. Right. If you've got cancer on your toe, it wants to get to the other toe. It's malignant. It's unpleasant. It's evil. Un misery. He said all the days of the afflicted, those that are, ugh, are evil. It's, it's tying in with what we just read. It's producing dysfunction. A merry heart doth good, but a broken spirit dries up the bone. We're seeing the same thought here. Are you guys hearing me this morning? Look at that scripture, uh, Cass. Put it up in the Amplified Version. How many love the word? Amen. The Amplified says it like this. It says, all the days of the desponding, desponding and afflicted are made evil. Made evil by anxious thoughts. They're made evil by what? Anxious thoughts and foreboding. You're thinking the worst. But he who has a glad heart has a continual feast regardless of circumstances. Are you guys hearing me this morning? Look at that in the New Living Translation. How many love the word? Amen. Oh, we're getting it today. The New Living says it like this. For the poor every day brings trouble, but the happy heart life is a continual feast. Look at slide number 23. Are you guys getting this? Yeah. All right. The Common English Bible says this, all the days of the needy are what? Hard. hard. But a happy heart has what? Feast. How many want a continual feast? Yeah. <laughs> the Good News Translation says this, the life of the poor is constant struggle, but happy people always enjoy life. Yes. God's Word Translation says this, every day is a terrible day for a miserable person. <laughs> <laughs> but a cheerful heart has what? You guys hear me this morning. Look at that scripture in the Message Bible. You guys are getting it. For the poor, a miserable heart. It doesn't mean that you're just physically miserable. It creates misery. A cheerful heart, what does it do? Everybody say happy, 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 happy. All right, let's go to 1 Samuel, the first chapter. We are so blessed this morning. 1 Samuel, the first chapter. We'll start with verse number one. How many love the Lord? Amen. How many are full of, just stirring up that joy, right? Yeah. Some people say, well, Pastor Michael, I got to wait for things to change. Then I'll get happy. No, Paul said it. I will rejoice. Rejoice yeah. in the Lord always. And again, I will rejoice. Will rejoice. Notice what it says here. Now, there was a certain man, uh, blah, blah, blah. That's a long name. <laughs> I'm really glad your mama didn't name you that name. <laughs> my goodness, my goodness. It's got every letter in it. It even got a Z. We just need a couple of X's in there. I mean, goodness, I mean, kind of... He says, of Mount your friend, and his name was Elkanah. I guess I'm saying. And he was the son of Jerome, the son of Hugh. Doo -doo 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 -doo. He's the son of a bunch of people, right? Look at verse number two. <laughs> and he had two wives. How many know that's one too many? Yeah. <laughs> one is plenty, praise God. He goes, in the name of the one, one was Hannah. Everybody say Hannah. Yeah. And the word Hannah means grace. And the name of the other was Peninnah. I like Hannah better. I like the name Hannah better. And, and, and Peninnah had children. But, but notice this now. Hannah, she had no children. So he's got two wives. Everybody say two wives. Two wives. And the one Hannah, which was grace, means grace, she had no kids. She had no kids. But the other wife, uh, she had children, right? And, uh, and so look at verse number three. And he says, And this man went up out of his city yearly to worship and sacrifice to the Lord of hosts at Shiloh. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, the, these are the high priests of the Lord, were there. And verse number three, <clears throat> or excuse me, verse four, I'm sorry, Cass. And, and when the time was that Elkanah, he offered... He gave to Penah, his wife, the first, one of the wives, to all her sons. He gave portions. Now, they're there to offer to the Lord, and so he gave portions for them to offer. And verse number five, it says this, and he said, 
But unto Hannah he gave a worthy portion because he loved Hannah, but the Lord had shut up her womb. Now, we're going to see in a moment that really wasn't the Lord shutting up her womb. Sometimes people, they said, you've got to interpret everything in light of, right? But, but, but they were just looking at it, and basically what their understanding at this time was, if you couldn't have babies, God's shutting up your womb. There's, in other words, you have nothing, no part, nothing you could have done to change it. There's, it's, it's, it's totally God. And it says that the Lord has shut up her womb. Now look at verse number six. So, but we'll just see in a moment something. And it said her adversary, does anybody know who her adversary was? Amen. Yeah, banana, banana bread, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> right? She was her adversary. <laughs> right? She was her adversary. And, uh, and, and, and she, she provoked her. Everybody say provoked her. Provoked her. Everybody say sore. sore. And for to make her fret because the Lord had shut up her womb. So she was, this woman, not only did she have children, but she was tormenting Hannah because she didn't have any. She provoked her sore. Notice these two words. I want you to see it here, guys. Slide number 31. How many love the word of the Lord? Amen. He said he provo she provoked her sore. It means this other lady was troubling her, causing her to be grieved, provoking her to anger, provoking her to math, wrath. And what was the word sore? Grief, frustration. This woman was, how many know that's what the devil tries to do? He tries to get on the outside to frustrate you and I, right? To get angry, right? To get grief stricken, to get frustrated. Yeah, yep. And so notice what it goes on to say, uh, Cass, can you put that, uh, put that scripture up in the Amplified? How many love the word? Yeah. So she, she provoked her sore. This embarrassed and grieved Hannah and her rival provoked her greatly to vex her because the Lord had left her childless. Look at that scripture. I want you to see it in the Message Bible, just to give you a different shades of it. It goes, but her rival wife taunted her cruelly, rubbing it in, never letting her forget that God had not given her children. Doesn't that just sound like the devil? Yeah. That he'll sit there and tell you, you, it's not happening for you. It'll never, the Lord doesn't want to bless you. The Lord doesn't want to give you that. The Lord doesn't want to help you. You're out there by yourself. God loves other people more than he loves you. But I'm going to tell you, thank God that her, her name is Hannah. It means grace. And what we receive from God is not because of our works, because of his love for us. Amen. Are you guys hearing this? Yeah. So let's look at verse number seven. Verse seven, it says this. And so... Not only is she tormenting her, and, and, and as he did so year by year, she went to the house of the Lord, so she provoked her, therefore she wept, and guess what she didn't do? This was year after year. Is this just a single year problem? No. So what, what are we hearing here? We're getting a woman on the outside tormenting this other woman. She's getting sad. She's grief stricken. She's frustrated, right? And so this is going on year after year, but the fact of the matter is she's not having any kids. Hannah's not having any kids. The other woman, you know, is tormenting, right? And so it's year after year, she's frustrated. Year after year, she's grief stricken. Year after year, she's angry. Year after year after year. Everybody say year after year after year. year. Has anybody besides myself ever had a time where it felt like, my goodness, this is going on year after year after year after year? Yes. She did this year by year and she wept. And guess what she didn't do? She didn't eat anymore. I can honestly say I've never had that happen to me. I mean, just, <laughs> there's just something about food that comforts me. <laughs> but this particular woman, she just stopped eating. And she, 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 she was frustrated. She's grief stricken year after year. Cassie, put the next verse up. And, and he goes, and, and then said Elkanah, her husband, to her, Hannah, why do you weep? Why don't you eat? And why is thy heart grieved? And this is the fatal mistake of a man. Am I not better than ten sons? Obviously not. <laughs> I mean, he's trying to comfort her. You know, why don't you eat? Why don't you, why don't you eat some? Ain't I better than ten sons? And she's like, really? <laughs> now, we know she loved her husband. But the point of the matter was, her heart was grieved. Are you guys hearing this? She's not getting external comfort. She's still barren. There's no fruitfulness. Look at verse number nine. And Hannah rose up after they'd eaten in Shiloh and, and after they'd drunk. Now Eli the priest sat upon the seat by post of the temple of the Lord. 
And so she's going, she, so she leaves the family. She's, now she's going to the, where the, uh, the temple was, the post of the temple. And, and look at verse number 10. And, and, she, and she, notice these words. She goes, and, and she, was, she was in bitterness of soul. She was in bitterness of soul. Everybody say bitterness of soul. Bitterness of soul. And she prayed unto the Lord and she wept sore. Look at this translation. I want you to see it. So look at that in the Amplified. How many love the word? This, this is a really extreme case, right? I mean, it said Hannah was in distress and so, of soul, and she prayed to the Lord, and she wept bitterly. Everybody say bitterly. Yes. Look at that scripture. I want you to uh, slide number 32, Cass. How many love the word? Yes. In slide 32, it says, in deep depression. She was in deep depression, and she prayed to the Adonai in Christ. In other words, she was in the bottom of the barrel. That's what the complete Jewish Bible says. The 20th century version said, Hannah was so sad. She was so sad. So sad. She cried and prayed to the Lord. Are you hearing this this morning? Yes. Is this, this, is a, this is a... Now, if she, if she was alive today, they would be putting medicine on her. Take some medicine. Yeah. Take some pills. Yeah. Take a happy pill. Right. <laughs> Are you hearing me? Yep. She's so sad. Look at that in the message Bible. I want you to see it, my dear friend. Let me love the word. Now, we're not trying to condemn anybody this morning. You might be sitting there going, Pastor, you don't understand sometimes. I'm trying to help you. Whether you believe it or not, that's my heart. It's not to insult anybody, hurt anybody. You might be sitting there going, Pastor, I am feeling just like this woman's feeling right now. Well, listen, I'm going to point you to the Word. Because the Word and the truth of God's Word will set you free. Amen. 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 Notice what it says in the message. It says she was crushed in soul. You ever been there where you're just crushed in soul? She prayed to God and cried inconsolably. Obviously, her husband couldn't console her. And she was inconsolable. She's crying to the Lord. Are you guys hearing this? Look at verse number 11. And it says this. She goes, and, 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 she, and she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thy handmaid and remember me and not forget thy handmaid, but will give unto thy handmaid a man-child. She says, I'll give him right back to you, O Lord, all the days of his life, and a razor will not come to, upon his head. But notice again, she said, Lord, if you'll look upon my affliction. Notice the word for affliction. I want you to see it. Slide number 33. Depression. Misery. She's praying in the midst of, I'm depressed. I'm in misery. This is horrible. I can't take it anymore. She said, Lord, if you'll look down on my misery, if you'll look down right now where I am right now, Lord God, where I'm at. Go back to the scripture. How many love the word? Amen. She said, Lord, if you'll look down on my misery, Lord, and you remember me and don't forgive me. Lord, 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 if you give me a child, I'll give him right back to you. Look at verse number 12. And it came to pass, she's, she's there at the temple and she's praying, right? She's, and she's continually praying before, before the Lord. And the high priest, Eli, he looked at her and he just was watching her mouth. Look at verse number 13. How many love the word of the Lord? Amen. Now it says, now Hannah, when she was there, she spake in her heart. Only her lips were moving. How many know God sees the secrets of your heart? Yeah. But her voice was not heard. So she's there and she's praying. And, and, and Eli looked at her and, he, and he, his first response, because how devastated she was, how beaten up she was, how, how much misery she was in. He looked at her and said, woman, he, she goes, she's been drinking. She's drunk. And look at verse number 14. He says, he says, he says, and Eli said to her, how long will you be drunken? He says, put, put the wine away from you. Because this, this is how devastated she was, how uncontrollable, how weeping. And her, her lips were moving. No words were coming out. And she looked like, and the, the high priest looked at her and said, you look like you're drunk. Go home. Put the bottle away from you. Look at verse number 15. And Hannah answered, said, no, 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 my Lord. I, I'm a woman. She said, I'm a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink. She goes, but I poured out my soul before the Lord. How many are hearing this this morning? Amen. See, I poured out my soul. I poured out my soul. Look at that in the New Living Translation. <laughs> How many love the word? Amen. Poured out my soul. She said, oh, no, sir, she replied. I'm not drunk. I'm, 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 I'm just very sad. 
Why, get, remember the big picture, why is she sad? She can't have any kids. Why is she sad? She's got somebody tormenting her. Why is she sad? This is going on and on, year after year. This wasn't a trivial, I just got bit by something. This was going on and on and on and on. She's tormented and she said, I'm just, I'm, I'm very sad, I'm sad. Look at the, the I guess, put it up uh, uh, slide number 35. How many love the word? How many are ready to break out, break loose, go further this morning? Notice the word Bible and basic English says this. He goes, for my words have come from a, a stored up, stored up sorrow. Was there, was there a lot in this woman? Was, there, was it stored up? You ever been there where you just go, my goodness, I can't just store. The key is you got to not let it store up. You got to get it out quick. But if, but if you're there today and it's stored up, the good news translation said, I've been praying like this because I'm so miserable. Look at that in the Message Bible. For some of you, you've probably never even heard something quite like this, but um, I believe the Lord's setting people free this morning. Amen. Hannah said, oh, no, sir, please. I'm a woman hard used. I haven't been drinking, not a drop of wine or beer. <laughs> I don't think they had beer back in those days. The only thing I've been pouring out is my heart, pouring it out for God. Are you getting this, church family? Are you getting this? Is this woman in a sad state? Yes. Well, you know, again, if this was today, we'd be going, you need to get medicine. We need to get you shock treatment. You need to go to Disney World, put the Mickey Mouse ears on, get, go to a happy place, find your happy spot. Look at verse number 16, my dear friend. Oh, we're already at 16. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. He, he, she, goes, she goes, count not my servant a handmaiden for a daughter. Of, don't think I'm a daughter of the devil. She, she goes, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief have I spoken to the Lord. Everybody say abundance of my grief. Of my grief. Cassie, did, did we do the message Bible on this one? Yes, yeah, do the message on this. Verse 16. Don't for a minute think I'm, I'm a bad woman. It's because I'm desperately unhappy and in such pain that I've stayed here so long. She didn't want to go home, miserable, heartbroken, hopeless. Now, she, now, now notice that she didn't tell the high priest what her problem was. She never said, listen, she never said, the reason I'm here, I can't have any kids. I got this terrible lady at the house. She's tormenting me. This has been year to year. She never said her problem. All she was saying, this is what I'm, I'm, I'm just, the grief, broken. Are you guys hearing me? Yeah. Now look at verse number 17. And Eli said, and Eli answered and said, go, go in peace. And the Lord God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. He didn't even, he, he didn't even know what she was asking. Right. He didn't know her problem. She didn't have to sit on a couch for 15 years. Tell me your problem. Now again, if you, if sometimes talking. What, are you guys hearing me? Yeah. He, 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 all he looked at her and said, she told him, I'm so sad. I poured out my soul to God. I'm so miserable. I'm so depressed. And, and he looks at her and says, woman, go in peace and God give you the petition that you desire. Notice the word for uh, Eli. I want you to see it. Slide number 36. He said, go in peace. Go in peace. The word Eli means ascension. Everybody say Ascension. I believe by the grace of God, we need some Eli's in our life that people that are going to say, hey, come on up. Yeah. Come on up. Get out of the melly grubs. Get out of depression. Get out of gloom. And go in peace. Go in shalom. Jordana just talked about it today. It means go in completeness, soundness, welfare, peace, safety, happy. It means to be made whole or complete. How? By God adding something or God subtracting. That's what Shalom is. What did she need? She didn't need that other lady to get out of her hair. All she needed is God to add the baby, and that would have brought completeness to her. I don't know what your Shalom is. I don't, need what, I don't know what God needs to add. I don't need what God needs to subtract. But there's people in this room today, people that are watching, there's an incompleteness there. There's a sadness there. He said, go in Shalom. Go in Shalom. Go in peace. Go back to the scripture, dear Cassie. How many love the word? Amen. He said, go in peace. Go in peace. And the Lord give you your petition. Look at verse 18. 
And she, and she said, let thy handman find grace in thy sight. Notice this. And so, so the woman, she said, let me find grace. Let me find grace. Let me find grace. How many are glad we can find grace? Yeah. You might be sitting there beating yourself up and saying, God doesn't love me. God doesn't care for me. I've been miserable for years. I've been complaining for years. I've been in the molly grub for years. I've been mad at that woman. I'm angry at that woman. I'm frustrated. Listen, listen, listen. Thank God. Thank God we can find grace and that God gives us not what we deserve. Amen. Amen. Isn't that the wonderful thing? He doesn't give us what we deserve. Thank God. Isn't that the truth? He said, she said, let me find. And so notice what she did now. She said, look, she, she heard that word. Go in peace. Go in shalom. And so, and, and she goes, okay, let me find grace in thy sight. So the woman, this is speaking about Hannah. She went her way and did eat. Manja, right? And her countenance was what? She went her way. Notice the word for way. I want you to see it. How many love the word? Yeah. See, all she got, nothing happened. Nothing changed. She still didn't have a baby in her belly. But she went her way. She went on her course. She, went, she started living again. Yeah. This is what a lot of people do. They get into depression. They stop living. They stop functioning. They get off the course of life. They get off the path. They get off the direction that God has for them. Yeah. She went her way. And the next thing that she was, go back to the scripture cast. How many love the word? Amen. From that point on, from that point on, she made a choice to be no more sad. But pastor, didn't anything change? Nothing changed. She still, she was at the temple. It wasn't like, oh, goodness gracious, look what God's doing. It's a miracle. Oh, the baby's coming right now. No. <laughs> Nothing happened. She just received the word, received the shalom of God, trusted God to add, trusted God to subtract whatever she needed to make wholeness or completeness in her life. And she went her way. She started living again. She started breathing again. She started functioning again. And she put a smile on her face. Not because anything changed externally, but because she believed God's word. Yes. Look at that scripture in the New Living Translation, guys. We're almost done. I got a lot more to share on this, so keep coming. Yes. And she said, let, and she said, oh, thank you, sir, she exclaimed. Then she went back and began to eat again. How many know that's a good sign? Yes. That's why I'm always happy. I like to eat. And she was no, no longer sad. Now let's finish this story here because we can't leave you incomplete. Look at, look at uh, verse number 19. Verse 19, it goes on to say, and she rose up the next, before she wasn't going to church with everybody. This time she, she went the next morning, she rose up early, worshiped before the Lord, returned and came to her, their house to Ramah and Elkanah, her husband, knew Hannah. In other words, they had sexual relationship. They were having sexual relations before, but she wasn't having any babies. He knew her in a, in a marriage sense. And his wife, and the Lord remembered her. Hallelujah. Look at that in the New Living Trans Translation. How many love the word? The entire, the, see this? The entire family rose up early the next morning. You know, there's some people, and, you know, uh, families, somebody gets depressed. You go to their house. Where are they? Oh, they're in their bedroom. They don't want to see anybody. You go to the house. Where's where so-and-so? Oh, no, no, they're, they're depressed. It's the seasonal depression. They don't want to be around people. Listen, when you and I make a choice and we just say, Lord, I choose to honor your word and believe your word and trust in the shalom of God. Listen, I'm going to get up. I'm going to start functioning. I'm going to start going to church. And the Lord remembered her and God gave her a baby. Hallelujah. How did it change? She chose to believe God and chose to rejoice. Amen. A merry heart doth good like a medicine. Amen. We didn't digress. We're still talking about the same thing. Yeah. And if you want your circumstance to change, and if I want my circumstances to change, you got to, I got to, is put a big smile on your face and start going, hey, I heard this Pastor Michael talk this morning. I didn't understand a lick what he said, but he, he said something about shalom. <laughs> and I can trust the Lord that he'll add and he'll subtract. Yeah. Right. Amen. And I'm going to rejoice in the Lord always. Hallelujah. 
and again I'll say rejoice because I know that God's on the throne. God is merciful. There's grace and there's mercy to help and things can change. Glory to God. Glory to God. Stand with me to your feet. Glory to God. Hallelujah. What do you got, Josiah? Rejoice in the Lord.